The year is 2007, and in secret, Google is working on what's to be known as the first Android phone ever, dubbed the Sooner Project. But before they were able to release it, Apple beat them to the punch with the original iPhone. It was a touchscreen iPod with a 3.5-inch display that had a built-in phone. Right before Obama was elected into office, Google reciprocated with their new HTC Dream phone, what's to be known as the first commercially produced Android phone ever. So in this video, guys, I wanted to take a trip down memory lane and show you guys the first Android phone and compare it to the newest one from Google. So it's officially been a few days over eight years since the original Android phone was released to the public. What's changed in these eight years? How far has Google come? And this is kind of like a similar video I made with the original iPhone and the last iPhone. First Android phone versus newest one. Now for the people that bought and used the G1 at the time, you may remember it with rosy colors, but it was not that great of a phone. To be honest, the Android operating system is the most impressive part about it, just how advanced it was at the time. I personally did have this phone earlier than I ever even had my hands on an iPhone. It was just cheaper and easier to get for me at the time. And we're not only comparing the first Android phone versus the newest one, we're comparing the first version of Android ever. This is Android 1.0. Oh, and yes, I mean 1.0 versus the newest Android 7.1. So let's talk about hardware. These phones are actually very similar color-wise, which I like, it's a nice throwback. Not that it was intentional, and this is a dev unit of the original Android phone, so kind of a little rare catch that I was able to grab. Anyways, they are completely different in terms of build quality. The new Google Pixel is made out of a metal shell. The old Google G1, like most Android phones at the time, was made out of plastic. It uses an old proprietary port, and according to Apple, was ahead of its time. The HTC Dream did not have a headphone jack like the iPhone 7. Just the top screen portion alone is the thickness of the Google Pixel XL. It was a very, very thick phone, but believe it or not, it was actually very comfortable to use in your hand. So let's talk about that display. 3.2 inches, glorious, 320 pixels by 480. The new one is a quad HD display at 5.5 inches. The entire surface of the phone almost is the display. So for some perspective, the same resolution display is on the right. And if I were to shrink it, you can fit almost 24 of the original HTC Dreams display into the resolution of the new Pixel XL. If I tried to reverse that, all you'd be able to see is pretty much the home button on the HTC Dream. So let's get to using this thing. Just like the iPhone 7, again, the HTC Dream was just ahead of its time. There was no slide to unlock, only a click to unlock with a button. So the home display has three pages which you could swipe through. Even the original iPhone couldn't do that on its first firmware. Now there was no virtual keyboard on Android 1.0, so you had to use this pop-out keyboard. And did I mention, this is probably the most swag cool feature of this phone. At the time, it was really, really cool because you could either use your phone as a smartphone with just a display or have it around. And did I mention how annoying that sound could get? That is for other people. Me personally, I could do this all day. <laughs> Anyways, the back is removable. You can actually change the battery. And, and this is an advantage again over the Google Pixel. You can actually replace the SD card up to 16 gigabytes. So battery and SD is replaceable, which is awesome. That's an advantage right there over the newer phones. And I don't think I'll ever get used to prying that rear cover off. It sounds like you're breaking the thing every time. Believe it or not, there is so much similarity between this first version of Android and the latest 7.0 or 7.1. It still has the app drawer, it still has the notification center, but instead of all the toggles up there, it has a menu key, which pretty much is the same thing in a way. You can still customize the home screen straight from it, widgets, you know, change the wallpaper from there. Of course, there is a multitasking drawer as well, except it works a little bit differently on the original one, but it's still there. And man, how can I forget the little scrolling wheel. This was also one of the most swaggiest, coolest features of this phone. It actually put some Blackberries to shame. Hoo-yack! Now, of course, Google didn't get inspired by the G1 to build the new Pixel XL, but it's hard to deny that they are very similar in some ways in both software and hardware. So next up, I wanted to talk about the power and speed of these devices. So of course, with time, we kind of forget about how slow phones were, but in some areas, the HTC Dream G1 was actually pretty fluid. So, here is the newest results of the Google Pixel on Geekbench, and the original just had 82. Just 82. There's no multi, no uh, high single core score, just 82, that's all you get. 
Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and see what it was like to use this thing. So this is measured in minutes, minutes, guys, not seconds, not milliseconds like on the newest phones, minutes. So if you wanted to load something right now, you were probably on edge. Even now on the newest Wi-Fi, the fastest I can get in my area, it took me two minutes to load CNN.com. Now, what do you get once it finishes loading? A mumbo jumbo of unusable web page. It's just everywhere. Of course, this browser just doesn't get updates, so you can't count on being able to use this thing. But if you're actually to try and use this thing in your day to day life, you would be tearing your hair out out of your head. Now, if anyone still has one of these, I challenge you guys spend one day with this phone and post back your results down below. So it wouldn't be so bad if the actual market worked. Now jump into the market and try and download anything. So since the beginning of this video, while I've been recording, I've been trying to download one single application and it's still attempting to download it. Now it may just be an Android 1.0 issue, but the fact that you can download apps is a big no-no for me in actual usability. Gotta admit though, Android actually had a market in the first version. Apple didn't get an app store until iOS 2.0 or iPhone OS 2.0. So I'm sure that we can all agree we would not wanna be using the HTC Dream right now. Google Pixel is far, far ahead of it. So the last thing I wanted to mention is the cameras. Size-wise, they're not too far off. I'm amazed at the size of the sensor on the Google Pixel, but the amount of clarity it gets in pictures. So of course, you get all those cool features zooming in on the new Google Pixel, but bring over the old HTC Dream and try and take a picture with the camera. So first off, let's load that up. Wait, did I click it? No, let's click it a couple more times to get it to attempt to launch. And then let's have our phone freeze up. Oh, camera can't be loaded, whoops. All right, so once we eventually do get the camera open, it doesn't have anything. There is not a single setting, nor tweak, nor option to do anything with the camera. It's just there, if you want a picture, take it. You can also choose if you want it to prompt after you take a picture, or just keep taking them forever. Now, the biggest flaw of this camera is that it uses a physical button, which every time you'd have to hard press deep, it would shake the photo and leave you with a judder. So this is the same photo taken first on the HTC Dream, and then the Pixel XL. Notice the colors, that's the biggest difference here. The HTC Dream seems like someone's holding several layers of cellophane over the camera lens. It is so much better, especially in low lights. Man, what a difference eight years makes. So guys, I just wanna say thank you for watching. Please leave me a like. This was not easy to make, not easy to find, not easy to downgrade the HTC Dream, but it was so worth it. Hope you guys appreciate this video. Have a great day and enjoy your current new Android phone knowing how much it took to get there. Peace.